Every so often, an opportunity comes along that enables you to make a positive difference to the world. This is a story about one of those opportunities. I believe that we are uh, achieving our destiny in many ways as being a leader in the world uh, in relation to renewable energy, and renewable energy is something which will sustain the world's growth. But if you drew a line due west from here, you'd run in the east coast of Argentina. So the wind that we get here, the, the rain that we get here, nobody's used before. And because there's no land mass, it just comes across this great expanse of open water. It's just windy, mate, and it's windy all the time stories around that it gets that windy in Marrow or sometimes that it blows the dogs off the chains. But, uh, <laughs> but it's got to get pretty windy to do that. This is the far northwest coast of Tasmania. It is prime cattle country. It is also an area that is famous for its air. This monitoring station at Cape Grim is one of several around the world that records air quality. The air that blows in here is the cleanest ever measured on Earth. In 1999, and not far from here, Hydro Tasmania erected a monitoring tower of its own. This one was tall, very tall, and it required some tricky aerial manoeuvring to put it together. For over 12 months, the tower measured wind speed and wind consistency. The results were outstanding. Average wind speed exceeded nine meters per second. And there was only a total of three days a year when there was no wind. This indeed was a perfect place for a wind farm. Wind is like um, gold. You've got to dig the gold mine where the gold ore is and Tasmania's got the wind resource. But whereas in places like Europe, where wind farms have been around for decades, here in Australia, they were relatively new and there was much work to be done prior to any thought of construction. The amount of work that all our people have done over the last two years in environmental, in design, in micro siting, in procurement, has, has really been terrific. To actually get to this stage now, I just can't tell you how delighted I am to actually be here to see this section. Superb. Or perhaps a good Australian term was, it's a ripper. This area of Tasmania is also steeped in Aboriginal culture. The original inhabitants needed to be consulted, as were the wishes of the local community. The only impact that's going to have that, you know, we'll serve from Marrowal, I'll serve from my house in the distance, but that's part of it. It comes part of our lives, and if we want uh, we want to progress down this natural, clean, green pathway, we're going to have to make some sacrifices about that. But overall, it's a good thing, a great thing, and uh, I just hope that, uh, that it reaches its full potential. I'm a bird specialist, and my role at Hydro is to examine bird issues in, in wind farms. So when we have a new site, we examine what's there and try and establish any sort of problem species or species that might be con of concern, and then develop management measures to minimise impacts to those species so that you know, everyone's happy. For example, at Woolnorth, we've put in place a lot of strategies to minimise the small possibility that birds could collide with the turbines. We will be doing a lot of vegetation management strategies which make the site unattractive for orange-bellied parrots. There are going to be no food resources around the turbines, so there's no reason why the birds should come on site. After many months of consultations and approval processes, work on the first stage of the Woolnorth Wind Farm commenced late in 2001. The construction of a wind farm from a purely construction point of view is not particularly stretching, it's not particularly difficult. Basically we have a hole in the ground, fill it with concrete, build a tower on top, we then have a box on the top which is called a nacelle which contains all the goodies, the turbine, the gearbox and controls and we have a nose cone and three blades. The steel towers are manufactured here at Alstom's Hobart workshops. Thick structural steel is precisely rolled and welded into four sections. 
When completed, each tower will be 60 metres high, which is taller than that well-known Tasmanian landmark, the Rest Point Casino. But that's the kind of size we're looking at. Quite big, eh? The steel sections are transported to Launceston, where they are painted with a highly protective coating. They are then transported to the site and assembled. Each section is lifted up by crane and bolted together with high tensile bolts. To get to the top is a 65 metre climb up the ladder. I won't be doing it. The towers are incredibly strong and they need to be because they support almost 100 tonnes of high-tech equipment. When we built King Island, we put on 0.25, uh, they were 250 kilowatt, uh, 0.25 megawatt machines, and they were not small. Uh, now that's only a 1998. Uh, we've now put up 1.75 megawatt. We know that the next lot uh, will be two megawatt, uh, and the, already there are people manufacturing four and five megawatt uh, machines. How far they'll go, uh, time will tell. Unlike the earlier wind farms of Europe and California, the turbines of Woolnorf are big machines. When assembled, the diameter of the blades measures 65 metres, which is broader than the wingspan of a jumbo jet. So getting the blades and the nose cone into position is no small feat. We actually prefabricate the nose cone on the floor and we offer it up with the cranes onto the nacelle that in 25 knot winds is a bit harem scary. This crane can lift 500 tonnes, but it's a slow process because this is the stage where the wind can play havoc. To help manoeuvre the fibreglass blades into position, a tried and true construction method is used. A couple of lengths of long rope and some able bodies. When in place, the tip of the blades will reach 99 metres into the air. So what is the effect of something this size on bird life? They don't operate like propellers, which is often a, a misconception, is that they operate like propellers and move very fast. They don't. Their maximum speed is 25 metres per second. And also that birds adopt an avoidance behaviour of the turbines. That is, they pick up the turbines in the environment and they start to avoid them. The team at Hydro Tasmania are justifiably proud of their achievements at Woolnorth and enthusiastic of their plans for the future. A lot of projects are really just driven by cost, schedule, quality. This project is quite different though in, it, in terms of it actually tugging at your heartstrings because you know that by doing this project you're actually uh, a key part of Hydro Tasmania's advancement, but you're also doing something for your fellow um, citizens uh, in the world, in fact. I've got the best job in Hydro, there's no doubt about that. When we've got the 76 turbines erected, we've got 130 megawatts of power. What a pleasure. It's a very good business deal. That's what's driving us. And wind and hydro work in perfect synergy. It's one of those really interesting and unique engineering feats that we're going to bring about here at the time that it's fully developed will be Australia's largest wind farm. Tasmania's hydroelectric schemes already generate the majority of Australia's renewable electricity. With the addition of planned wind developments, Hydro Tasmania has the potential to feed an extra 3,000 gigawatt hours of clean, green energy into the national electricity market. If this extra energy replaced the same amount generated by coal and gas, it would be the equivalent of taking more than a million cars off our roads. I think a lot of Tasmanians have taken for granted. The hydro has been there, it's provided electricity, it's provided an opportunity for industries to be established and for people to have uh, energy at home, but they've never seen it in the role that it plays in the total significance of, of world development and particularly of sustainable development. This is a real question and we've got a real answer. The Wool North Wind Farm is the first bold step into major wind developments by Hydro Tasmania. And if the way it has been embraced by the local community is anything to go by, then the future of wind is assured. Powered by nothing more than the air that we breathe, 
it is easy to become captivated by these wind turbines. There is a hypnotic majesty about them and a sense of feeling that something positive is happening. The thing that I just so love about wind is that it's as close as you can get to being perfect from a point of view of sustainability.